So with the piece now assembled, the legs now assembled, it will sit on the table, kind of like so. The bottom of the bracket here, you can see in, in this section here, just matches the profile of, of the curvature of the bottom of the table perfectly. Uh, because we took that little bit of time. <clears throat> next uh, next uh, task here is determining where along here I want to put the two legs. I can do it by sight, <clears throat> but I, I do want to make sure <clears throat> that the edge, <clears throat> the top, or, well actually the bit of the leg that hits the floor, <clears throat> excuse me, the bit of the leg that hits the floor is going to be <clears throat> behind the edge of the table. So I, I don't want the legs sticking out farther than the edge of the table. I don't want the legs on the floor about here. I want to make sure the legs are about an inch. In fact, about the same distance from here to here as it is from here to here when it hits the floor. Just something visually appealing about that uh, dimension. So <clears throat> I can uh, use a level and a square or do math, but either way, <clears throat> I'll figure out where I want to put this. So I have the legs positioned where I want them. Uh, I used the square just to kind of make sure that I was uh, getting close to uh, the distance I wanted from the edge and lining it up with the top of the leg, which you can't see, it's just off camera. <clears throat> that gave me the line that I wanted here. And then I simply used a steel ruler to get me centered um, along this line in the middle of the table. So I'm one and uh, just proud of the 16th on each edge. The next thing that I'll be doing is drilling kind of the same operation as we had going through putting the screw from here into the leg. So I'm going to go through this piece into the table top using a slightly shorter screw but we'll use the Forstner bit to go down <coughs> to seat this uh, screw and then we'll drill the uh, couple pilot hole or drill the pilot hole uh, to take the screw into the wood. Of course, the trick is don't go too deep or we'll wind up with a hole coming through the top of the table. So for these holes, I'm going to be going in at a slight angle, not a terrible angle, but just a slight angle. And I'm only going to go with the Forstner bit, not the full depth of the head of the Forstner bit, but probably about three quarters of it. Okay, here's the tricky part, a pilot hole that cannot go too deep. So, this being the length of the screw, and the depth of the uh, Forstner bit hole that we cut is uh, pretty close to that. <clears throat> as long as this that protrusion is not deeper than the uh, combination here of this piece and the top will be okay. <clears throat> but just to be safe, I'm going to move the bit in so that it is exactly the length of the screw. And I will not be able to go deeper than that. Okay, I went with a smaller block here, so I'm not going <clears> to, <throat> it won't interfere with the drill. And I put a clamp here so to keep this thing from drifting anywhere. Second pilot hole. OK. 
Okie dokie. So that's the first of our leg pairs. <clears throat> Isn't that a great view? <laughs> I'll get you set up to see something a little better than that. So I'm going to put on the, uh, the legs on the other end. Uh, and then take it all apart, put some glue on it, uh, the glue on the legs. I'm not going to glue the leg assembly to the top of the table. Um, I don't want to do that. And that's the table loosely assembled. Uh, what we can do now with the table in this position, or at this state, is think about now the shelf that I want to put uh, on the bottom four inches off the floor. Now whether that's a shelf or just simply some braces, I'm still undecided, um, but uh, I'll think about that for the next little bit. So I'm going to try putting in a cross piece just to see what this will look like. <clears throat> I've measured four inches from the bottom of the foot to here. That represents four inches of floor clearance. What I'm bored just across <clears throat> this board is just put in place to hold the cross member up as I try and get a feel for the angles that need to be cut. So the end here is going to be a compound cut. It needs to be cut at this, <clears throat> obviously this angle, so that it is flush with the surface of the leg. And it needs to be cut at 12 and a half degrees uh, to match the angle of this face of the leg. And exactly the same cuts need to be made at this end where we've got a cut coming across here parallel with the legs match with this surface uh, in this in this plane and 12 and a half degrees to match in this plane. So I'll set up so I'll make those cuts both pieces I have a second cross member here, the intent, of course, when we're doing something like this. <clears throat> so uh, on both pieces will be cut exactly the same way, and then we'll have to do a lap joint in here uh, where the two pieces meet. So that'll be a little bit, uh, a little bit tricky, but you know, fortunately, again, both pieces will be cut exactly the same way. Just make sure that you get one not upside down from the other. All right, all right, doing a little bit of high school math here. The famous formula, Sakatoa. So the figured out the sign of the angle that I want to have up here for this cross piece that's coming from here to the four legs. Here's the cross piece coming down. The angle that I want to cut here is going to be this, the sign of the angle is going to be seven and a half, which is the distance between the two legs, by 28.8125, which is the distance from here to here. So that is 28 and 13 sixteenths works out to be 28.8125. So doing all the math, 15 degrees. Compounding the tilt of the blade, 12 and a half degrees. 15 degrees on the miter, 12 and a half on the blade. Eh, what could possibly go wrong? We'll give it a try. I'm just going to shave a little bit off this. So it'll be a couple of passes. Just, uh, I don't want to have this little tiny chunk flying around. The math does not lie. I think that's going to be a good fit. So I'm going to make the same cut on the other end uh, and we'll put, put it in and see how it fits. Well, you might think I knew what I was doing. That is a perfect fit. All right, I'll cut the other piece exactly the same way. And then we'll figure out how to do the uh, lap joint in the middle. Uh, yeah, oops. I cut it at the wrong 15 degrees. I have to turn my miter the other way. Good thing I have extra length on this piece. 
So I have the piece set up on the saw uh, to take out this section. Of course, I'm going through like this, so I'm taking out a swath. Kind of looks like that. Um, this is a bit of a tricky cut. It took me a while to figure it out, and yeah, I made a mistake on the first piece. So the angle that I'm going for is actually um, 59 degrees, 58 degrees rather. And kind of an odd angle, but um, that's how it turned out. So got the first piece cut. Well, second piece. The first piece was a mistake. Second piece cut, going after the third piece. Take a little bit of finessing when that cut is uh, done to make sure that these fit together properly, but let's see how it goes. I'm not really expecting these to fit right off the top because they may need a little bit of fiddling just to make them, uh, I did make it a tight fit. So I'm just going to do a little bit of sand on this, uh, this side here. Okay, with a little bit of sanding, I made this a much closer fit. A little bit more sanding will get it perfect. So come down here, we're all right. I'm, I'm pleased with the way that's gonna fit in there. That's lovely. <clears throat> On this side, uh, do I have, with a little bit of pressure, we'll bring that in and tighten that up. And the same down at this end, we gotta just apply a little bit of pressure this angle seemed to get out just by a little bit, but I think that'll be okay in the end. Uh, and similarly over here, a little bit of pressure, we'll get that in and lined up right. So I think we're in good shape for these legs, or for these braces. What it will require is the uh, same kind of pocket screw technique. So I'm going to drill a hole through here. And we'll attach this with pocket screws into the leg. And it'll be the shorter screws, but I'm going to screw coming down at an angle that way. So I'm mounting these, uh, drilling them out in the reverse order. I'm using my small bit first, then I'm going in with the Forstner bit. I'm not really sure why, but you know, it just seems to make a little more sense.
Yeah, putting my hands here while drilling with a Forstner bit, not a good idea. So that's the one side in. Note the hand position for the Forstner bit. I'm learning. I moved up, by the way, if that pilot hole, I moved it up to a 1 8 inch uh, hole rather than the 7 64 uh, This being a very small, slender piece at this end of the leg, I, I thought I could go with a little bigger pilot hole, and it's okay. It, the, the screw is still biting in very nicely. Okay, there's two. You can see how I got this thing kind of clamped up while I put these screws in. Clamp here just to kind of keep these pieces together and snug. Uh, I put a clamp, a long clamp on here just to kind of bring the leg ends tight so that it butts up here nice and firmly. I got a clamp underneath here just to, supporting this little piece that keeps the leg from going down. So the leg can't go down, uh, can't push that out. Uh, so I think we're pretty good. So drill these two holes. Smoking. That is some hard wood. Okay, we'll get our Forstner hole in there. Manual pocket hole. Now, sometimes I've noticed uh, when I do these pocket holes manually, um, I didn't, I don't get the angle exactly right. So there's a little bit of uh, uh, pulling right on the inside, at the bottom edge here, of that Forstner hole. But as soon as the screw head clears that, we're just fine, and it goes in beautifully. All right, I am happy. That's looking good. That really tightens up the whole structure uh, very nicely. So I'll flip the table over and you can get a first hand look at what this is like now. And there we are. I kind of like the look of that. So I'm happy with the uh, way the table came together. I'm uh, going to take it all apart now and do a little bit of fine finishing on the pieces, get rid of all the sharp edges, a uh, little bit of texturing here and there, and uh, 
Yeah, so that's the next bit. Take it all apart. One of the things that I will do is I'm going to mark the legs, indicate kind of the right side, left side, uh, right side, left side on each of the parts. So it'll go back exactly the same way. I'll come back when it's all disassembled. All right, I have the table completely disassembled. And what I did is I went through and uh, to start <coughs> is I just uh, touched up this joint a little bit I, on the dry fit. The piece wasn't, um, what, these pieces didn't fit uh, flush with each other. So I sanded a little bit out of there uh, to make a nice flush fit. So I'm happy with that piece. What I'm going to do now is just take some sandpaper, go over all these edges, get rid of some of the scorch marks from the blade, and then uh, touch, just touch along the edge here to get rid of the very sharp edge left by the saw. For all of this, I'm using some 80 grit sandpaper. We'll go over the whole piece much later with 220. Just to get rid of the sharp edge, a little bit of a rundown like this. Now I do realize that by kind of taking off this edge here, where these two pieces are going to meet, that will leave a little bit of a gap as it crosses over, but I'm not terribly worried about that. I'm okay with that little bit of a gap. Okay, I like the feel of that. And that's really what this is. It's, uh, do you like the feel of it? Um, so I like the feel of that piece. So I'll go through the same process on this one. And then we'll get to the uh, legs and we're gonna do them a little bit differently. So I wanna show you the technique that I'm using just to put a little texture on the legs. <clears throat> I've done a couple sides here, ready to do another side. So I'm using my angle grinder with a wire wheel and I'll just be, <clears throat> as I start up the angle grinder, I'll just be kind of touching on the piece, working down a little bit, and then I'll come back with some sandpaper and clean it off. Uh, this being a very hard wood, the wire wheel will uh, just scuff it a little bit. Uh, it also leaves some black marks on there that come off with the sandpaper, but what I'm looking for is just a little bit of a gouge, a little bit of an indent, just something to say that this has been around for a long time. Bring him close to take a good look at that. So you can see where I've gone over the wood and there are some definitely wire wheel marks. What I'm gonna go with the sandpaper now, I'm just gonna use my hand, my finger, and just kind of go over these little marks just to kind of reduce them a little bit so they will take on the appearance of being a lot more weathered and aged. Uh, leaving them like that, it looks like fresh bruises. So by uh, sanding them out a little bit, we get uh, a little bit uh, more aging. Here I took a little piece off the side of the leg. So do that from time to time. So 
So I have finished uh, texturing the legs. And one of the things I, I have observed and I thought I should pass along is that as you're texturing the legs, there are some natural areas where normal wear would, would appear. And for example, in this dark line here. So I just kind of used the wire wheel and took off a little bit of that and that kind of gives it a much more organic shape and, and it looks quite natural given kind of the condition of that wood. Similarly up here, there's a dark streak and so I've carved a little bit of a groove in there uh, with the wire wheel. Then used the sandpaper just to kind of smooth it out a little bit so that it looks like some natural and aged wear, some weathering. In here I had a fairly dark crack, or a deep crack rather. Uh, so I kind of gouged out with the wire wheel, but uh, what I did is I used some uh, super glue with um, activator, just kind of filled in that gap and then sanded that off. That was a pretty deep fissure. So I didn't want to leave that as is, but we still get that nice, you know, it has a good appearance. So that's the, uh, that's the legs. So we got the legs all sanded, all textured rather. Um, I'm happy with them. When you run your hand up and down, they just, they just feel really nice. They don't feel like a factory edge anywhere. So that's really kind of nice to have as an aesthetic appeal. The top, we got all the sanded <coughs> around the whole edge just to take off the sharp corners. Our little leg connectors that hold uh, the legs onto the bottom of the table, kind of finished off the top of this to make that all smooth. Our uh, cross member for underneath is all set up and sanded and neat. So I am ready now to reassemble the table, uh, gluing the joints together that need to be glued and affixing it to, uh, getting it all together to the point where we could uh, start thinking of a final sand and some finish. So we're into final assembly of the legs. I got the first uh, pair uh, put together. So I'll just show you what I'm doing here. Fundamentally, just a little bit of glue. Well, I should be kind of generous with the glue. It's not a little bit, a hefty amount of glue. Put that in place. screws and I'm using uh, sawdust just to kind of clean up the glue what squirts out this works really well even for picking it up off the saw. So I uh, mean, off any surface. the other leg. There we are. Legs are glued. Now I'm going to do a little bit of sanding just to kind of even up this surface here. This, and these surfaces and a little bit of sanding on the back side here just to make sure that this is going to be nice and a flush fit and same thing on these surfaces so it's just a little bit of tidying up on that and then we can mount these legs onto the tabletop itself Everything is now sanded off. All of the sharp edges have been broken, so we don't have anything that's going to be a sliver hazard. 
We're now ready to uh, put the legs back onto the base of the ta onto the uh, table. I'm just getting these screws a little proud of the base here so I can make sure they get into the holes. Nothing worse than just being off a little bit and trying to drill a new hole with the screw. Not sure if you can see that, but I have the screw just poking through, just enough to let me know uh, <clears throat> that I'm going in the hole. I've got those legs sitting up really nice and flush on the table. I'm going to bring you around so you can see that. So that leg is sitting just really nicely on the base of the, on the uh, table. And with our curved edge, we're sitting nicely all across the back of the table. And here we're sitting very nice as well. So I'm quite pleased with that result. Put the legs on the other end. Same technique here, we'll just put the screws through just so they're proud of the far surface. And that fits on really nice, even better than that one. I'm really happy with the result of that. Okay, so we'll get the cross pieces put in place and that's going to be the last thing that will be glued. Here we go, we got this really nice joint in here that we've been, I wrestled with a little bit. So I'll put some glue in that joint. And that'll be the last bit of glue uh, used on the table. And there's our table, all finally, final assembly. I have a clamp on that cross piece just to let the glue set. And here's some of our character marks that we've got on the piece. Run your hand over this and it just it just feels really nice, very very organic feel to it, a little dent in there. And it's not a factory finish, which is exactly the thing I was going for here. You know, it's got blemishes and it's it's old wood. That's what it's supposed to look like. So I'm quite happy with all of that. A little bit of leftover glue drop. So our final sand will be with some 220 grit, and then we can apply a finish. Haven't decided what kind of finish we'll put on this yet. Might do a light stain. Anyway, to be determined, we'll put that in the next video. But that's our table. Very happy with the result.